All right, welcome again to the Simple Bible Study Podcast, picking up today in Romans, the 13th chapter uh, and the 8th verse. So, um, hey, thank you all for joining us uh, on this uh, channel, by the way. We're growing. We've got more subscribers than ever, and uh, it's a slow growth, but a growth. <laughs> I like to see it going in the right direction. So I appreciate everybody who liked the video, watches the video, comments on the videos. God bless you. And I appreciate the encouragement. So we're picking up today at this eighth, uh, 13th chapter of Romans and this eighth verse. And we'll open up in a quick word of prayer. Father, we are so appreciative of the fact that you have let us teach your word and learn your word. And so, God, we pray that you would bring anybody to this study, that it would be a blessing for and a help to, whether it be one or 1,000. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. And so Paul says here at this eighth verse, owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth hath fulfilled the law. The Bible, I'm sorry, let me read that ninth verse too. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the, comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, this, this book, the Bible, is very consistent about debt. And that is, debt is to be paid off. And if you owe somebody money or whatever you owe, and make sure you pay it back in full. But Paul points out a debt here you can never fully pay off. He says we owe a debt of love. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Owe no man anything except to love, uh, to love them. He says, you'll never not owe love to people. I think that's one of the best ideas in scripture. Why don't you find somebody you can love today? We're not talking about this syrupy watered down thing, you know, running around telling you love them all the time. I love you. I love you. And it means nothing. I've been around people like that. They want to tell you how they love you all the time out of some religious and pious put on, you know, uh, but you weren't loving me when you uh, were, were gossiping about me behind my back. <laughs> no, that, that, that's not the love Paul is talking about. Ta Paul is talking about real, genuine love, the kind that is shown in action. Now, that's always needed. He says when you have loved, when you have treated somebody well, when you have cared about somebody, you have fulfilled the whole law. Verse 10 says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, at verse 11, and that, I'm sorry, yeah, love worketh no, no ill. Yeah, we read nine already. Yeah, love worketh no ill. Uh, and, and so this is the, love is the fulfilling of the law. If you love people, you won't commit adultery. People around talking about, uh, 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 people running around talking about love is love <laughs> and you can't help who you love. And, and what they really mean when they say that is lust. And lust is actually the opposite of love because lust is selfish. Lust looks for what it can get for itself. You can't love somebody you're committing adultery with or fornication with because love would make you stop and make you help this person not ruin their lives or not ruin their families. Do you see that? Love would make you say, let's honor God's word in spite of what I want. Let's give up fornication. Let's give up homosexuality and homosexual behavior and, and those things that, uh, 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 that, that are contrary to what thus saith the Lord. Love will care more about the other person than your own needs. <laughs> You see, that's what love, that love is not selfish like lust is. Love makes you care about the well-being of the other person. And so if you love, you won't commit adultery. If, 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 if you don't, uh, if you love, you won't kill. <laughs> you don't steal from somebody you love. You don't bear false witness or lie uh, uh, to somebody you love. You don't covet or, or want what they have if you love them. You don't do anything to purposely hurt somebody when you love. <laughs> Jesus said there in Matthew, the 
the 22nd chapter and the 37th verse. I'll go there now and read. Yeah, there. This 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 young man had come to Jesus, and and asked him, "What is the great commandment in the law?" Jesus said unto him, Matthew twenty two thirty seven, "Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the greatest uh, commandment. And the second is like unto it: Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law." And the prophets, as I said before, when you live for God by the power of the Holy Ghost, you don't need a bunch of rules and laws. <laughs> when you decide to live a holy life and to love others, you fulfill any law that God would have. Isn't that wonderful? A holy life is one in which you love. <laughs> you love others and you love God. If you can do that, you will meet all of God's criteria. And so verse 11 here says, and knowing the time that now it is, uh, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. One great preacher says, here is Paul putting out the alarm clock and setting it for us. <laughs> he says, Christian, wake up, wake from your slumber. This is, this is no time to doze off. I, I know I know everyday life can kind of slow you down and maybe take your eyes off the Lord a little bit. I know it happens. It happens to me. But Paul comes in banging on pots and pans in this verse. <laughs> and he says, get up. Keep running for God. Keep living holy. Keep loving. Keep looking up. Keep fasting and praying. Get up. Your salvation is nearer. <laughs> mm, that is your deliverance is coming. I don't know how long ago you first truly believed, but however long ago it was, you are closer now to the appearance of your Savior for your Savior coming for you than you ever have been. We don't know how much time before he comes, but we know eventually either he's coming for us or we're going to him. <laughs> but the point is, be ye also ready. So many people are leaving here and 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 they're leaving suddenly. It seems like over the last few years the death has accelerated. And if if you don't know the Lord, that's frightening. All these people dying seemingly at, at once in this time frame. But for us that know him, Paul says here, your salvation, your savior, your salvation is coming. <laughs> All of the trials and the heartbreak of this life. Uh, that that keep on happening and continue to happen, and all of the the, the 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 disappointments and the discouragement, all of that. But some glad morning, <laughs> when this thing is over, my salvation is coming. He says, "Your salvation is nearer." And by the way, He is my salvation. My salvation said to me, He said in His Word, "I go to prepare a place for you." that where I am there ye may be also my salvation. My salvation said that in my father's house are many mansions. <laughs> if it wasn't so, I wouldn't have even told you. So my salvation said to, said to us, when you see the troubles in the world that are happening, that when you see all the troubles, the things that are happening now, he said, my salvation said, look up, <laughs> lift up your heads for your redemption draweth near. <laughs> Paul says here, your salvation is nearer than when you believe. Verse 12, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor, uh, uh, the armor of light. He says, let us walk honestly as not as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. He says, and since your salvation is coming, in these two verses, he says this, since he's coming, forget about this stuff down here. <laughs> uh, forget about all this stuff. Forget about going and having a drink when you got troubles. Forget about getting drunk. He says, forget about chambering. That word there, that word there, chambering means the bed. <laughs> and you can find peace, you think. 
You think you can find peace in somebody's bed. He says, forget about that type of thing. <laughs> he says, forget about wantonness. And that's having shame or doing shameful things. All the shameful things people are doing today to self-medicate and escape the pain they're feeling. He says, forget about it. <laughs> he says, forget about strife. And that's when you compete with people. Some folks feel like if I get a bigger house than the folks down the street or a bigger car than my brother or my sister, I'll be all right. No, there's no peace in that. Forget about that. Forget about envying other people. Here's what you do in these last and evil days if you want peace. He says in verse 14, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to wear Jesus <laughs> as a garment over yourself, over your body. You've got to wear him. Let him cover you from this old wicked world. Let him warm you from the cold and barren things of this life. Be proud to live for Jesus. Forget about this flesh and put this flesh under subjection to him. Cover this flesh with Jesus. <laughs> you will never regret walking around with Jesus on your chest. With Jesus, forget about the Superman emblem. Put Jesus on your chest. <laughs> forget about all these high fashion designers, Louis Vuitton and Tommy Hill, all that. Forget about, put Jesus on <laughs> and you'll have peace in this life and you will be ready when your salvation appears. <laughs> Because he says it's nearer than when you first believed. <laughs> Your salvation is on his way. He's coming back soon, friends. Your salvation is on his way. And even if you don't see him crack the sky, one day you, are, you and I will go down into the ground. This body will be left here and we'll be going to see him. And we will meet our salvation on those golden streets of heaven. <laughs> and so hang on. Keep on going. Be ready for when he comes because your salvation is nearer than when you first believe. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. We'll see you next time.